Hello and welcome to the Visual Storytelling Podcast. My name is Fred Ranger. Thank you so much for joining me today for that very special episode where I'm chatting with one guy that I really, really respect out there from a photography standpoint and podcasting standpoint. His name is Jeff Harmon. And he's the guy behind the Photo Tackle podcast, and he recently took over the Master Photography Podcast Network, which if you're not subscribed to, you should definitely click on the link below and go to these channels because they are tremendously insightful when it comes to taking very technical stuff, you know, some gear, photography gear, lightning, cameras, and computers, and putting it in very simple terms. So if you are starting your journey towards photography and storytelling, I think you should definitely have those two podcasts on your list. But you know what? All around good guy, Jeff. I love the way he talks about photography and inspiration and gear sometime when it comes to telling more efficient stories and just his career and how he's built an ecosystem where photography is part of his life, but also, you know, managing a family and day to day. So without further ado, here's the interview with Jeff Harmon. I have a very special guest with me, and uh, he's a very active member of the photo and podcasting community. He's the host of the acclaimed Photo Tackle podcast, Mr. Jeff Harmon himself. Welcome to the Visual Storytelling Podcast, man. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for being here. Um, this is a, uh, a very interesting uh, conversation that we're about to have because uh, on, my po- on my podcast, we talk about all forms of uh, art and all forms of visual storytelling. And Jeff, for the few people uh, in the photo and podcast world who don't know you, can you tell us a little bit more about who you are and what do you do? Sure. So uh, I am a hobbyist photographer, um, which means... You know, I, I have a really strong passion for photography. I love getting out there with my camera. I love making images. It's really, really fun to me. I anticipate doing this forever. Like, I have a day job. That's why I call myself a hobbyist. I have a day job. And um, I go do photography every chance I get. And uh, it, I antici- it's my like my retirement plan. That's what I want to do. When I retire, I want to go just, you know, take pictures for a long time. But how how do, how do you manage like uh, because I mean you've got a uh, couple shows on the interwebs uh, that you uh, that you host and then you've got your day job and you also have uh, I think you have a family and, and and all this great stuff in Utah so how how do you manage that uh, that day to day man it's uh, so really I cut out TV <laughs> good, <laughs> there's good. no TV in my life other than some sports I do wa- I record the sports and I watch some sports but. Uh, other than that, I, I don't watch TV. Um, so it, it's it's either taking pictures or doing podcast in like every spare second I have. My family comes first, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff with them. I have three teenagers; they keep us super busy. So, um, in fact, that's I mean that's really kind of why I got into photography in the first place. The kids were getting into activities, that, you know, several years ago that I wanted to get good pictures of them doing their thing, whatever it was: soccer, basketball, dance, all those things. And, uh, and the, the, we had a little point and shoot camera. It wasn't nearly good enough, obviously. So I decided, all right, we're going to get a camera. And it's, it's kind of funny because we bought a camera at Christmas time. It was our, like our family gift that year. And, you know, we, we, I had this expectation that I'm going to go take pictures of my kids. So we, we had this, the basement and bean bags, and I wanted them to like catch a football. I threw to them while they jumped into the bean bag and I wanted to capture that. And so we set up the camera and we're trying to take pictures and they were still like totally out of focus and blurry and all this. It was still this big problem. My wife says, did you buy the right camera? <laughs> and I thought, well, I don't know. And so I had to figure out how to use it. And that's, that's what started me into all of it was, was that uh, kind of event. And uh, and how how did podcasting actually enter your life? Because I know uh, you were part of the was it the uh, not the master photography uh, network? It was called Improve Photography. Improve. Yes, yeah, it was and, called and Improve. So so how did you run into the, this whole ecosystem? I mean, from from a point and shoot to being one of the you know one of the most influential people on the uh, on the internet right now for photography. So uh, it, it's all thanks to my really good friend, Jim Harmer. And people confuse us because I'm Jeff Harmon and he's Jim Harmer. And so, I, so I, the names... I had to focus where before the... <laughs> I, I practice a few times not to mess up. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, it's fine. Poor Jim. I mean, people mistake us all the time, usually that my name for him. And that's not fair because Jim is, is just a really, 
really good guy who um, really got into photography, and he built Improved Photography. Um, at one point, so he, he created a, a website, Improved Photography, which is still there today, still producing some really fun content, and it's a, it's a great website. That's what I stumbled across as I was learning how to use my camera. I started looking after that experience in my basement that, that winter um, after Christmas, and uh, I was like, okay, there's got to be good resources out there to teach me how to use this camera. I have no idea what I'm doing. I got to go figure this out. And I ran across Improved Photography, and um, it just so happened that about... I don't know, it was six months, a year later after that, um, I was consuming everything I could about photography, learning how to use the camera. And, uh, and Jim had started the podcast. And um, so I was listening to that. And his co-host that he had on the show was moving on to other things. He didn't want to do podcasting or photography. And so Jim just put it out there on his podcast saying, he's looking for a new co-host. So if anyone wanted to be, then you could apply to be a co-host. So I decided to give that a go, even though I'm here like less than a year <laughs> with a camera, <laughs> just kind of figuring a, st- a few things out. And I, I sent him, a, a, I filled out his little application. I said, what I could do is provide the hobbyist view. You guys do this full time. You talk about gear that I think a lot of people can't even afford to have. And I can bring the hobbyist perspective to the podcast. So... Jim did a whole bunch of trials. He had all the all, a whole bunch of people apply, and he had all, all of them come on and do one show with him just to see how they did as they recorded their shows with him and how did you, how do you are you as a podcaster, and uh, and he um, he didn't choose me as the co-host. He chose someone else, but he did say I want to start a different show though with, for you. I want to do that hobbyist perspective. So let's start a show, and I want let's call it Photo Taco, and I said. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Photo taco. And, and he's like, yeah, the, the, the tagline, it's, it's tips in the time it takes to eat a taco. Uh, okay. Or, that or a burrito, great. right? Or a burrito. <laughs> yes. And, uh, <laughs> and it, it, you know, it, it started out that way. We tried to keep it under 15 minutes initially, but then it was kind of silly because I was, uh, the, the focus of Photo Taco is breaking down really technical topics into something that I hope everyone can understand. Yeah. And everyone can be able to relate to and, and take in the information. Um, topics that, that tend to scare people. They, they try to dive into it themselves. They even go to whatever online resources they can find. And they struggle to really make sense of it. So that's what I try to do. I'm not sure I'm always successful, but I, I do my best to do that. And, and it was silly to be like, okay, at first I was chopping the topic into multiple episodes because of the 15-minute time limit idea. <laughs> which is how long it should be to eat a taco. And so I decided I don't care how long it takes. That's really not important. What we're going to do is just make sure I dive into the topic and I provide all the information and however long that takes is however long it takes. So that's what the episodes are now. It was a weekly show when we first created it and I, I loved it. It was it was awesome. Um, Jim made some changes over time. He, he established a podcast network. So Photo Taco was just one of them. We have Portrait Session and... and uh, Latitude and uh, Thoughts on Photography is another one that's been kind of dormant for a long time, but the others are still running. And um, and are they all so, on the same feed now? Or because I know at some point they were yeah, separate. Yeah, at one point, uh, they started out all separate. They started out all having shows whatever frequency we wanted. I was weekly. Some of the others were supposed to be weekly, but they weren't really doing it weekly. Okay. And uh, so it, he made some changes. I mean, he owned the network. It was his thing, so he could do that. <laughs> and he, uh, he made some changes, and he brought them all into one feed and sent, made, <clears throat> made all the shows uh, monthly besides Improved Photography, which was still weekly. And then the idea was every Monday would be a release between the other shows on that feed, and every Thursday a release of, master, of uh, sorry, Improved Photography. So we... Uh, we were doing that for a bit. Photo Taco went to a monthly, which worked better for me personally. Yeah. Having it be every week was a lot. That was taking a, quite a bit of time. And uh, and so it's good. I'm, I'm still keeping it uh, monthly. And then I'm, I'm we, we changed. Jim actually decided to make a career pivot about a year ago. And he got completely out of photography. And and uh, he's, he's doing other things now. So he was very kind 
to turn the network over to us, to the hosts of the other shows, and we've been carrying it on ever since. That is great. That is great, and I, I'm I'm a big fan of the uh, the actual uh, uh, ecosystem that you guys have built because uh, I think you mentioned it. Uh, the 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 great thing about it is that it's not for advanced photographers. So anyone that wants to get into photography or that wants to learn uh, from people just like uh, us, enthusiast photographer, uh, it, it it actually brings a lot of value. Speaking of which, um, I have I have a question since I have you on the show right now. Sure. A lot of people are writing to me. Uh, is the X D three better than the, than the A seven three and all these cameras? Are you are you with me when I say that there's no there's no bad cameras these days? Like if you if you look at at all the offering from Fuji, from uh, uh, Sony, and from Panasonic, and all this great stuff, and you've reviewed a lot of cameras. Your your co hosts have reviewed a lot of cameras. Is is it possible to make a wrong choice these days to to tell your stories with a, with the gear available? I am totally on board with you there. I it, it is so much more important to know how to use the camera than it is which one you pick. Uh, the, the camera body itself, it has not nearly as much to do with the final image that you make mm-hmm. as a lot of people would leave. Uh, not even people, manufacturers. The camera manufacturers, they have to sell cameras. That's what they're in business to do. So, of course, they're going to make it seem like every single release, this is a camera you've got to have. And, and boy, the other stuff before this was garbage, but now we really have something. And they, they got to sell cameras. That's how it's going to be. But I mean, the reality is you can take even a 10-year-old digital camera and make phenomenal pictures. There's no, it's not the thing that's limiting you. The, what, what you need is technique. You got to get, you have to figure out how to, how to be, uh, create those images. And, and I'm trying to be very specific in how I use the wording here. Make or create photos instead of take a photo. Um, because to anyone can take a photo. Anyone can push that shutter button. I did that that Christmas, you know, right after I got that camera. I was taking p- photos just fine. I was pushing the shutter button. But I was not making or creating photos. Um, and that that's way more important. The only part of the gear that I think does actually really, really matter is the glass. Whatever lenses you're using on your camera, makes, that makes a massive difference. And, and it's true. That, so that was another part of the challenge I had with that first camera. It came with the kit lens. I had no idea what I was doing, so I didn't know any better. And that was a very limiting factor. The basement was actually totally dark. I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know that was a low light situation. Um, I didn't realize that 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 was going to cause a lot of issues and that I needed faster lenses, which is another thing like, well, what does it mean faster? Like it's physically faster? No, that's not what it means. All these terms and things. I, I try really hard on my podcast to... Uh, define those things and and talk through it so, so that everybody can understand what's happening. It's it's weird to me. I've run into a lot of people who are very um, I'll call them famous in the photography world, who they sort of like this barrier to entry where you have to know the terminology. We're going to call lenses glass. We're going to say lenses are fast. We're going to whatever it is. All those are things. Because it's sort of like a you have to you have to make the effort to understand this before we can actually talk, before we can actually communicate, and before I'm going to try to help you. You got to understand all this stuff, and I just don't like that. I I want to, everyone to be able to have the fun like I do with photography, so I try so hard to uh, to define what things mean and, and what they're talking about. But yeah, the cameras you can't make a mistake today. I just barely did a review of the Canon EOS RP on my podcast. And I knew it was going to bring, draw all kinds of, of ire because there are some specs of that camera that I just, I'm confused by. And I don't think it's as good a camera as Canon could have done, but it's still a fantastic camera. It's still going to take absolutely stunning images. There's some specific types, like it, sports will not go well. That's just how yeah. the, the specs of the camera are. But boy, is it going to take awesome pictures. So- so you didn't uh, you didn't call it the RIP just for clickbait uh, purposes? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, it, and and it, it would be awesome. I'd love to to get it in my hands and, and go give it a shot and and use it. I, I'm absolutely certain for portraits, it is going to be phenomenal. It'll be an awesome, awesome camera. So you, yeah, you're totally right. You could grab a Canon T3i camera that is very old, and you can make awesome, 
awesome pictures with it. So yeah, I don't, I don't think the camera has nearly as much to do with it as the person behind it. Yeah, the person behind it, and and I mean this whole show here about visual storytelling um, and the tools we need to to create those stories. Uh, I, I would kind of uh, ask you the question around storytelling, just to continue on, on that topic. The glass is very important. You did mention the, the person behind the camera, uh, but what about storytelling? What how, how does storytelling play a role in your photography or in the photography you like? It that that has more to do with it too. Like those are the images that become iconic obviously when when there's a story that the image itself says without even having to give a background so we're not talking about like the story the story of how you created the photo which is it has its own thing and I've I've definitely told some of those stories on my podcast too which makes it meaningful to me personally for sure there are some some photos that have a lot of meaning to me or the circumstances about the photos means the person, the client that that uh, hired me to to make photos of them, they are really important to them. But I think what you're asking is a photo that when someone totally detached from the situation looked at it, there's a story that they can see in that photo, and that those are those are the very best photos that are out there. Um, it, it's it's a tough thing to do. I, I, it's not easy by any stretch. I'm not sure I've really even captured one yet that um, that I feel like has that kind of impact on anybody. I, I've definitely got a lot that are meaningful to me or meaningful to the client and and um, are, are images I'm proud of. But I, I don't think I've really come across the situation yet where there's the emotion or drama of a situation that I've been able to capture. Yeah, and um, any uh, any place you go for inspiration. Speaking of that holy grail, that that kind of destination, I think the the goal is is not that important. The the process to get to the goal, sure. and the inspiration we're getting from you know our fellow photographers or uh, a, any other type of art, or, or not even art. Sometimes we get an inspiration from a conversation with a friend or with a family member. So where where do you get your inspiration? What keeps you going uh, and returning back to to behind your camera? Well, I think, like you said, it's maybe the process. Um, I, I think going down the the path that's we call our our podcast the Master Photography Podcast. And I was worried about the name initially because I didn't want people to think what we're saying is we are masters of photography. Because <laughs> the masters, I, yeah, <laughs> no, not not by any stretch. What we are trying to say with the the name of our show and what we're doing with our show is helping people to get on that journey towards mastering their photography and giving them tips, giving them um, suggestions or inspiration, trying to inspire people to get on that path and uh, and keep going. Don't give up on it. It's it's challenging. Like I said, I I don't think I have in the past uh, five or six years that I've been into it really really passionately. I've got that image yet. That, that image that tells a story. But I am, I love the path. I love the journey trying to get there. And, uh, you know, it, it's different things are going to speak to different people. Some find it in portraits. And, um, you know, capturing a photo where you can just see through the eyes of the person a, a story there is really, really cool. Or having the, the lighting be set up so that it's a dramatic sort of lighting that really can tell a story too. And I've got some images that I feel like are getting close there, but, and, and I don't know, maybe I'm just hard on myself. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know, but, but, um, but capturing those is, is tough and I love the, the journey to get there. So for inspiration, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I mean, I'm a podcaster, so I listen to a lot of podcasts and, and, um, you know, a, a bunch of them do tell stories and, and help in, in how it's going to be there, but it's, it's, being out there, I, I think that's the way to, to do it is just to get shooting, to uh, to shooting the things you love too. Like the if you're passionate about a topic, if you're passionate about some kind of a shot, then the the drama and the passion is going to come through in your work as you do it. And so finding an outlet or finding other people who are just as passionate about the same type of photography you're doing, that's a really good way to stay inspired and try to. Uh, to find those situations and those moments and be ready when the moment presents itself to be able to capture that image and make it be like realize the vision that you have for it creatively. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm so aligned with you on that one. Uh, do, would you say that that podcasting actually has brought a lot of uh, inspiration? And I know you run a Facebook group, very active one. You also have, uh, uh, you know, you're on Twitter, Instagram, all this great stuff. How, how does social media and podcasting play a role in that um, vibe that you keep going? Yeah, certainly. Um, 
running a podcast definitely has, has helped me to stay engaged and motivated and wanting to go. Although I think even if I didn't have a podcast, I, I love it so much. I'd probably be doing the photography parts of it anyway. Um, but it, it does add to it that I'm thinking about it probably a lot more than other hobbyist photographers are because I do a weekly episode, you know, weekly show about it on, on a podcast. So yeah, I, I probably do um, dedicate a lot more thought to it, a lot more research, uh, a lot more uh, digging into, like you said, social media, following, you know, some of the mainstream photographers who just produce incredible work and make me feel silly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that, that's, it's all good to be able to see that. And, and it's been good, like over time, I have been able to, to notice that I am, I can understand how it is that, that they created those shots way better because I've looked at them for a long period of time. And then as I'm on the journey and learning and, and you know, getting better at it myself, as I look at a photo now, I can, there's, it's far easier for me to be able to figure out what the lighting was that was used and how they do it. And, and I've got a few that I've tagged and kept like saved to my phone where it's like, I want to create a shot like this. So I, I want to save it someplace where I know I can have it. And then I think I know how they do it, but I want to go create a shot like this and, uh, and see if I can see if, if I know how I have the skills to be able to reproduce, uh, and recreate the image that they have. And then as I do that, I get other ideas about, well, I want to change this just a little bit in this way. And I want to see how that works. I want to, and it, it's really just so much fun to me. Like I said, when, when I retire someday, there's going to be a whole <laughs> lot more, more shooting going on. And that's, that's going to be really fun. So, uh, and I want to, I want to continue on that because, uh, uh, you know, you see some YouTube videos out there and some Instagram posts and some photographer seems to be living the life, you know, quit my nine to five and went straight <laughs> in a hundred percent photography. Now I'm traveling the world and making piles of money. Uh, so uh, what's what's your view on that? And I know you've been uh, working with full time working photographer and also some enthusiast uh, photographer, just like uh, yourself, myself, and uh, and so on. So so what's your view on that like kind of fake life that you keep seeing on your feed? And you're like, oh, should I quit my nine to five too? I mean, it seems so easy. Uh, while, while we know that it might not be that easy, right? Exactly. So I, it, it's a frame of reference that I have with any, re not just photography, but. Something I have to make sure I keep in mind with all social media, you're only seeing the very best from everybody. You're seeing the very best moments of everyone's life, for the most part, where they are going to say, look how cool this experience was. And, and when you see that, and that's all you see, you tend to kind of think, well, that's, that means that's what's happening all the time to everyone. And it can make you get down on yourself. And then I'm like, my life is not this great. My life is not like I see on, on these others on social media. And uh, so I, I just keep in mind, like, no, no, it's just that's what they're posting. And in some cases, it's very staged. You know, they, they worked really hard to make the circumstances be the way they are to produce the image that, they, that you're seeing or the event that you're seeing. And none of the work that it, that it took to get there or any of the failures that it took to get there are being shared. It's just the final result where it finally worked and it all clicked. And yes, it was awesome. It worked out really, really well. Yes, there's, there are some photographers who get to travel the world, make gobs of money, and create fun photos, but there's not very many of those. <laughs> and they still have challenges. They still have stuff that doesn't go right. They're not going to share any of that, obviously, but they still have problems. And, um, and so, so it's, it doesn't hurt my feelings at all to see that. I, I just, I, I'm trying to use the image itself as an inspiration to help me, motivate me to create better images. Um, but the life they lead and what they do, I don't think I actually know what their life is. Um, that's not being fully on full display. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the the danger of Instagram is just infin infinite scrolling into uh, right. you know set up uh, uh, stage uh, stages around the world uh, in front of a beach or in front of a, right. uh, a bikini contest or whatever. I think this is uh, this this this. I mean, it started as uh, what, what do you think about the other platforms? I mean, Flickr used to not be like that. 500 PX also a great platform where uh, I tend to seek uh, inspiration on a on a different level than Instagram. So so what would be your your platform? forms of choice when it comes to uh, other things than Instagram? Um, yeah, I, I used to do some 500px too and go there for some inspiration. Uh, Flickr, like you said, uh, when it first started, um, and I was a very early user of Flickr too, uh, they, there were better images. And, and now that, that SmugMug's taken over Flickr, yep. 
that that's headed in a better direction again because they're going to limit how many photos people can put up there and you won't have um you had a lot of really non-inspiring images that were out there and people were using it more of as a like a backup of their photos than they were their uh, a portfolio of their work exactly and um so so that that's probably going to turn out to be a little better but yeah, it's, I, I think Instagram is probably the, the primary one. Um, I do I try to find some people on Twitter because Twitter does tend to have more sharing of behind the scenes or, or the events leading up to an image than just the final image, which is really what you're really almost always going to see on Instagram. Very, very few photographers put any sort of like behind the scenes or, or stuff leading up to the, the final image. Although there are some, and the, I love following those because I, I can see more of what they're doing. That That's more inspiring to me than just posting a final image. I agree. Uh, any any photographers, uh, podcaster that uh, you want to recommend outside of, of course, the Photo Tackle Podcast <laughs> and all the other stuff you're doing? Anyone that uh, that's worth uh, uh, you know listening to or, or watching? Oh, certainly. Yeah. Um, so I, I love uh, Don Kamarichka's podcast. Um uh, this uh, see it's the photo geek weekly i think is what he's called it yeah right and podcast. um and and maybe that's because of uh how similar it is to photo taco <laughs> where he takes he he brings on guests and they talk about extremely technical news stories so a little different cuz i i in photo taco i try to teach a skill teach a technical thing to learn and it, don sort of covers that a, a bit in the news that he covers too but it's mainly just kind of him and his co-host's reaction to news and what uh, what's gone on from a technical perspective during the week, and then um, so I love that one. I, I love Twip, this week in photo with Frederick, uh, with Frederick Van Johnson. He's yeah. he's great. I like the interviews that they do and um, and how they go about it. The Photo Focus uh, podcast series that they're uh, Levi Sim. Uh, he he's a fantastic photographer really great guy too i've just recently gone on a photo walk with him and and uh wow what a what a great photographer he he has street photography just totally nailed it's awesome to see him him work in that um let's see uh sharky's shows i I like his they're they're good sharky james and um so i I listen to those all the time so i it's it's fun to hear oh and then one, one of the ones that i i love to follow a lot too is tony and chelsea northrup they're they're fantastic. Yeah, did it, they just go writers. through a little, uh, little bit of uh, drama lately? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they 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 have had quite a few uh, podcast episodes or videos that they've posted recently that have kind of struck at the nerve um, for for lots of people. But I, I just I really love the the content they produce and the way they approach it. It's it's uh, no nonsense kind of uh, real people reaction, um, and and I, I like it though. They do a great job. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, we're approaching the end of the. I'm trying to keep it under 30 minutes. That's okay. my goal yeah, yeah. every time. No problem. Uh, so, uh, where can people actually find out more about uh, yourself and about uh, the great stuff that you put out every every week and every month? Sure. Yeah, I'd love love to have uh, listeners check us out and give give us a chance to uh, to win uh, a subscription if the, if it's there. Um, so, Master Photography Podcast is the main podcast that we do. That's a weekly show. And we, we vary from like news reaction kinds of things to techniques and, and uh, help. There's, uh, we have uh, five co-hosts, a team of five photographers, all of different varieties, different genres and skill sets. And uh, we just get together and, and talk about photography every week. So that's a good one to check out, Master Photography Podcast. And then we've talked about my more technical uh, podcast where it's mostly just me. I, I do bring guests on occasionally, but mostly just me and uh, covering a topic. And that's Photo Taco. So you can find that at phototacopodcast.com. This is awesome. Again, I want to thank you so much. I think we've uh, we've learned a few things uh, uh, today. You're always very insightful when when you talk about photography. I love the fact that you're not that uh, pretentious uh, working photographer with the fifty thousand dollar of gear. This is very concrete for people. Uh, so again, thank you so much Jeff, for joining today. And I hope we're going to reconnect soon because I really like this conversation and uh, uh, I would love uh, for us to uh, reconvene and see uh, where we're at in maybe six months or something like that. And yeah. I, will, I will definitely uh, put the links down below if people want to uh, follow the Photo Tackle podcast and the uh, Master Photography uh, ecosystem. So thank you so much, Jeff. You bet. So glad to be on the show. Thanks, Fred. Cool. Cheers. 
And there you have it, guys. This was the interview with Jeff Harmon. Such a great time discussing with uh, a great guy. So if you are interested in learning more about Photo Taco Podcast or Master of Photography Podcast, you can click on the links down below. If you want to give me feedback on this show, please do so. I'm at Fred Ranger on Twitter, also at Fred Ranger on Instagram. And you can subscribe to this podcast if you're not subscribed already. Thank you so much. Cheers. Oh.